the first uh, of the five four days of seeing the, uh, uh, the movie, the first night I cried like a baby. I cried like an infant. I couldn't believe people could do that to a human being like that. And then as the movie went on, I saw people transforming and getting farther and farther away from Islam. But the whole catch of the movie was, then I thought that people were ready for Islam. So I rushed out and looked out. I said, did you see the movie? Did you see he was a Muslim? They still didn't get the connection. So that tells me that some of the wires, and it's like a building been burnt. An electrician comes in uh, to see if that any, you know, when there's a fire, if there's a big fire in a building, the electrician needs to come in to see if the electricity is, the juice is still on, and if the wires intact. Talking to some people that are not Muslim is like talking to a burned building and the wires are all burnt up. You have to put new wires inside of them. That's when you're talking to a non-Muslim. We can already get into our talk. But talking to a Muslim is like going to a burned building and all the wires are intact. But some of them, but some of the, some of the wires are not connected. So you just do a little adjustment to connect the wires, make sure there's tape around the ones that's sort of naked, not covered, and then you can turn the juice on and let them show it's out. That's what I find in my experience of dealing with a Muslim. Muslim to me, talking to a Muslim, my work, my half my over half of my work is done. He's already Muslim. I just have to wake up the conscience in him again about Allah, the Tawheed. So we want to get started. Uh, do you have the Oh, we're going to do it downstairs. Okay, we said we're going to have it downstairs. So all of you who can, we hope you can come. You're going to benefit. And if, uh, you, you're definitely going to benefit. If you know anything about me, you're going to have a good time. You're going to be laughing somewhat. So don't be worried. I'm going to be bored. Okay. Good night. Good That's a revert to Islam. Raise your hand if I can see you. Only one. Is there everybody over here who was raised Muslim? Raise your hand. Everybody who was raised Muslim, born and raised Muslim, put down your hand. Thank you. So, may Allah reward you. We, uh, the brother, myself, and others, uh, we didn't come from that. I wish we had a microphone. We might need one, but. I guess we'll have to work with our thing, but that would help with my voice. Brother Jabril, you might need a microphone. So, I want to get started. So, I encourage each and one of you, every one of you, to, to go to watch the, the movie Roots. How many of you have ever seen that movie Roots? Very moving, very, very moving. And you see the saga of a people that was uprooted out of their land and brought to a foreign land. How many of you ever heard of Li Liberia? Well, Liberia was one of the places that the ex slaves, some of them that died in the water, or some of the ex slave masters, the slave masters, took when they couldn't break them and sent them to Liberia. But, um, but my, my fate was not that. My father, my mother, my grandparents are descendants of slaves. But humbly Allah, I'm so happy to say I'm a slave today. I'm a slave for Allah subhanahu wa like we all are. So let's get started with our talk here. You might not believe it, but most of the time I'm very nervous because when you're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to make sure that you get the right uh, representation. So the topic here is how to give dawah, how to be effective. Dawah means to propagate the divine message of Islam that was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When should one give dawah? According to the scholars and those of knowledge, knowledge precedes speech. 
You have to know yourself what La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah means. This is very important. We just say, oh, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Or we just say, La ilaha illallah.
that he is the creator alone, no partners, no associates, that he is not part of creation. He was seeking to return man back to his natural disposition, and that is the religion of Islam, peace and submission. How he gave da'wah, and we study the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the first generation of Muslims, and the generation after them, who will be affected in giving da'wah to the people. So this brings us to five points we must have in giving da'wah. I have a friend of mine named Sheikh Khalid Aini, who was from, he was in the nation of Islam with me, and he was a captain in the nation of Islam, I was a lieutenant under him. And when he came, uh, when we accepted our shahada, he went on hard, and after that, him and I were both was invited to go study overseas. But fate had been going one direction with another, so he went to study for seven, eight years. And in the course, he'd been studying back and forth and met the Medina for the last 30 years. He sit with such shape as Shaykh uh, Ibn Bass, Rahim Allah, and other prominent shapes. So we came up with some points. These are a few of the points of how to do dawah. We're coming out with the Lord soon. We're seeking to make a book on 100 points that you need to know. But we want to go with just six of them today. Five or six of them. The first one, in giving dawah, the first thing you must have is an niyat. The right niyat. The right intention. The right intention. B. Of the class, you have to be sincere, and pure at heart. Three, know the prophet's life from A to Z. Four, to walk on, rely on the law alone. Five, humility, humility. Six, and we're probably just going on point, patience. Going out of your dollar. That's what we want to talk about. First, before we get to the action that you do, I want to go over the points. I mentioned about niyat, the first point. This deals with your intent. Verily, actions are judged by intentions. El Hassan said, we used to seek knowledge for the dunya. And we have to look at ourselves. Who are we today to compare ourselves to the self? Who even themselves find it hard to correct their intentions? It was very sincere people. We have to have the right intention. The heart, we have to be careful. Because you can start out with the right intention and something can change that intention along the way. You say, I'm going to give dollar. And on the way to give dollar, what's your name? Who? Shay. What's your name? Who? That's too hard for me. I better take his name. Huh? Yeah, that's easy. Omar, see you. Omar is going to give dollar. But all of a sudden, on his way, that was his intention. On his way, what's your name again? Shay. He said, yo, what's up, man? Where you going? I'm going to do some, some ball, man. And before you know it, he got his cabis on and everything. And he said, well, wait, let me go take this off. And he forget about his intention was to go to down. This happens to some of us as adults. Some of us who are married, we have the intention to go to give down. And everything, Shaitan is doing everything to divert you from going to give down. Shaitan is here arguing with you and your wife over nothing. Or uh, the tie is flat. And this is an excuse. Oh, I can't do it now. I gotta fix this time. All those things from the shaitan to keep you from going to do now. Once you make that niyat, act on it. Many things, and we're dealing with the niyat. Many people do things out of pride and fame. Some people want to be looked up to. They want to be called shit. They want to be famous. Oh. And when people come to talk to them, they always want the people to submit to them, treat them in a special way. The brothers, when I came here, they, they 
and they're almost right. <laughs> Some of them sisters say, what do you do for a living? He's a doctor. When I was overseas in Medina, I was watching how people were trying to get married and stuff. I would look in the paper, the Arab Nabu, the, the father, who was a doctor. He went for his daughter $20,000. $20,000. This is what he wants. And the person must be Pakistani, the person must be Palestinian, or whatever it is. This is not Islam. What message are we sending to the non-Muslims when we do things like this? That we're selling our daughters and our sons like property. We need to be careful. Don't grieve in the prophet's life. Don't grieve how the people insult you. You should smile because Allah is purifying you. The prophet Salah was Salah, as we know, when he went to Taif, we know the whole history of what he done and what happened to him. They stoned him, the kids, the children, and the blood was squishing in his sandals. Did the prophet say, I'm going to give you my to jump into these niggas, but they will pay for this. I'm going to step to them. Did he do that? No. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made you hard and when the angel of the mountain came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the angel said, Allah has sent me to you, O Rasulullah. I will take these mountains and smash them. He said, no. Maybe their children will be Muslim. He had hope for them. Iman is between what? Hope and fear. Iman is between hope and fear. He had hope for the people, and he feared a lot of wrath for those people. And if they have been near a type, and the people, of course, are all Muslims, and they love us for us for some. We get to the good part, so stay away. I'm a martial artist, so if I see some of y'all going to sleep, I might jump over the table and pull a move on you, wake you back up. And this is my little buddy here, he's trying to go to sleep on me. You know, watch out now, I'm telling you, I might jump over this table and do something to you. And another thing, when you're giving dialogue, you need to know who you're talking to, who's speaking to. Sometimes you're talking to somebody and you think you're talking to the person. And you're talking to their shaitan. And you're trying to convince the shaitan that it's true. You won't know this until you become an experienced dawah who you actually talking to. I've been giving dawah to a person, and I've said to them, while they're talking all this crazy talk, trying to uh, refute what I'm saying, I said, who am I really talking to? The person said, I beg your pardon. I said, who am I really talking to? Because I don't think I'm talking to you. I think somebody else is speaking on your behalf. The person did like this. I said, no. Who am I really talking to? What I was saying, sometimes the shaitan influenced this person's word. I want to tell you a quick situation and we'll go to our last point. My friend, Khalid Ami, who lives in Medina, him and I was in Lansing, Michigan at one time, giving down and we was on a bridge uh, on this college campus, big college campus. And all these people was walking. And all of a sudden, a, a whole wave of women came by. And we were standing on the bridge in Kibis. And we got uh, dawah materials, incense and stuff. And one lady, she looked at us. And she happened to be African American. She was all her friends. And we said, would you like to have a offer of a she turned around about 30 people. She said, why don't you go, she told my friend, why don't you go get a real job? For some of us, we would be devastated. Oh. Oh. You know, why don't you, and embarrassed. Everybody looked at you and laughed, and people laughed. You know what his response was? The first response he gave up was a smile. He said, I have a real job, working on your soul. Working on your soul, sister, because you're a soul, sister. You see? He didn't let it affect him. Rasulullah knew that Allah had guided him and was guiding.
inviting him and was with him, but he knew that his patience was going to be tested. And we have to remember that. A few more points and then we'll go actually how to give them. I want to talk about the Tawakal just for one minute. How many know what Tawakal is? What is Tawakal? You know about what Tawakal is? Ask your father, you need to know what Tawakal is. It's to rely on Allah alone. Doing Dawah is a lonely business. Right now, I'm sitting in front of you. People that would listen to me, treat me polite, would give me food when I finish, would give me water, would make sure I'm okay. But when you are out there giving Dawah, it's not like that. You might have somebody to throw a brick at you, shoot at you. I've been shot at with a shotgun in Miami, Florida. Talking on a microphone, I'm in, I'm, in the, I'm in the trench, I'm in the hood, I'm in the real hood. This man shut up all that going. And I kept him. Pass him, right? He said, oh, you ain't gonna shut up? All of a sudden, he all of a boom, 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 boom. He said, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Well, that nation of Islam product came out of me. I went into FOI mode. FOI is a military name given to the men of North America that belong to the nation of Islam called the Fruit of Islam. The brother was on the mic. When he shot that gun, I was already at his door. We said the next way, if you shoot and harm any one of us, he said, you, we told him, you will not be able to find a place to hide. This man was shooting that thing. But I'm saying, I got a lot of stories like that. Sometimes you gotta give Dawah the hard way. You got a hard head. Some people will not accept the song, but you're talking nice to them. Now, I got techniques that we're gonna give you, but let me just go over this point. Number one, you meet a person. My friend, she called and I was out giving Dawah. And all of a sudden, it's real cold. It was in New York City. I mean, bitter cold. This is back in the day. I didn't have much of a man like I have now. I just want to let y'all know. I was a little more, I was a little wild, you know. And so, this big African American, he decided, we went into the, the restroom, we used the restroom. So my friend, Chicago, he left his glasses and he left his uh, gloves. It was very cold outside. And we tried to go down one outside with our pounders and everything. So he said, I forgot my gloves. So he go back and retrieve his gloves. This big African American standing there in front of this coffee shop called Chop Full of Nuts in New York, putting on his gloves. He said, Excuse me, brother, those are my gloves. I don't see your name on them. They're my gloves. He said, Excuse me, those are my gloves. I left them in the bathroom. Well, I have them, they're mine. I found them, I don't see your name on it. So he took his gloves. Now, remember, this was my early years of giving dialogue. I'm a much better to deal with that now. So my friend, he said, okay. He walked away, and he had a shopping bag, my friend said, caught it. And he would deal with it different now, too. This is when we were younger. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what happened. So he walked down the street, he got up, he walked down the street. I said, what you doing? What you looking for? I said, what are you doing? And all of a sudden, he said, it was a red brick laying there. He said, pick up the red brick and put it in the bag. He said, let's go. Now, my name wasn't Sheikh Elaine Muhammad then. I'm not going to tell you what my name was. And his name was not Sheikh Khaled. So he came back, and the guy standing there. Yo, so what's going on? What you want? He said, uh, you have my glove. I told you, you're not getting these gloves. He said, well, I have something for you. He said, what you got? So the guy bent his head and come like this. He reached into the bag, grabbed the brick. Wow! <laughs> Bust his head wide open. And guess what? That person today is a Muslim. Tafir! <laughs> he got his arms the hard way. <laughs> but they don't like he became Muslim. 
Now, I'm not encouraging nobody to go out and do that. <laughs> but that's when we were young and inexperienced. How many love it? We want to go to our real meat of our talk, but I want to tell you three things that will take you away from Dawah. This will take you away from Dawah quick. Wealth, power, women, or men. Once again, wealth, power, women, or men. If you're a man, wealth, I mean, if you're a man, women, or power, or wealth to take you away from the mission of doubt. I've seen it happen. You'll forget about doubt. You see that pretty woman, you be like, brother, aren't you a die -in? I used to be a die if I saw her. <laughs> if you're sincere to this, no woman can pull you away from it. Power, you like people uh, controlling people. You got control issues. Wealth, this is a big one. It would take control of you. How many of you heard of uh, the rapper Napoleon? Oh, come on, raise your hand. You heard of him. He's my friend. I was with him. We just did a, a talk together. He's from New Jersey. I'm from New York. I used to do bodyguard for uh, entertainers in New York while he was doing his thing. So anyway, today, He's a caller to this deed. He's very, very strict. If you don't know who he was, he was with Tupac. He was the leader of the outlaws. He had skill. He made plenty of money. He used to buy one house, and somebody had a house better than he did, he spent another hundred thousand, two thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars to buy that house. Car, women. And now, five years ago, he took his shahada. And he's a very I mean, some of you brothers that have been Muslim for like, I mean, he would straight some of y'all out. He, if you go to play some music, oh man, he would flip on you. So, come to the law, and he loves you for dollars. So be careful those things. Now, what you came here for was how to give power. These are more of the spiritual aspects. So now, we're going to get to the meat of it. This should wrap up and you can ask questions. We'll wrap this up in about 20 minutes and then we'll take some questions. Going out and give dollars. What I call this, you are going fishing. How many eat fish here? Yeah. So, so y'all eat no fish? Do you know fish is good for your brain? Fish contains iodine. Iodine is a chemical that you need in your brain. So y'all need some light in this to get dark. They don't want to sleep in here on So we're going to talk as though we're going on a fishing trip. Anybody ever been fishing? They don't fish in Africa, Pakistan, Palestine. Y'all don't know fishing. But y'all ain't had time to fish. You've been fishing. Sister, well, maybe y'all haven't been fishing. So we're going to teach y'all about fishing. When you're doing Dawa, it's called fishing. When I was in the nation of Islam, they called it fishing. And I learned a lot of things from them. Oh, there we go. Number one point when you're going fishing. Knowledge of how to fish go with an experienced person. If you're going fishing, you know nothing about fishing, who do you need to go with? Somebody that knows how to fish. Two, make sure you have the right equipment. You're going fishing, you ain't going plumbing, you're going fishing. What is that equipment? A rod. That's that pole thing. <laughs> a reel. I got a knife. That's that wind up thing. Hooks. That's that little thing that go in the fish mouth. And the string, the, the test line. That's the string that's hooked, connected to the reel and the hook and the rod. And bait. These are your basic things to go fishing. Is that right, brother? Okay. Now, I ain't talking about taking a big net fishing. I'm talking about just casually fishing. So that's number two point. Number three, your location. 
either the inflation going is fresh water or salt water. We'll explain that later. Number four, what the weather is. Is it cold? Is it raining? Is it snowing? Is it hot? Is it cold? Know the weather forecast. And the last, number five, once the fish is caught, have a place, you can head and get it. All right, now let's go over each point. Number one, knowledge how to fish. Go with an experienced person who has a good success record. There are some people who go fishing every day and don't catch any fish. You don't want to go with that person. He got fish stories. Man, I had a fish on the line and he was this big. What happened? Oh man, he got away. You don't want to be with that person. Go with somebody experienced and a person who has caught fish. This person is not who you want to be with. You want to be with the one, when he goes out, he catches fish, most of the time. In Dawa, as a diet, catching people, or catching fish means having the ability to stop that person in their tracks, and engage them in a positive conversation about Islam. That means, I'll, I'll put this to the test. If you take me downtown, there's a lot of people walking around. I'm dressed just like this. I got some Dawah material in my hand. By the power of a boss, the power of the I'm going to be able to stop a person just like that. They can engage in a conversation about this song. That's the type of person you want to be. Also, when you go fishing, a true fisherman, Looks like he's going fishing. Now wait a minute now. Y'all ain't gonna cut my head off here. Like. <laughs> Everything's alright with that flag? It ain't going over. No, it's not going. I don't think it's going. Okay. If you plan to go out to give Dawah, you should look like you're going to give Dawah. It's possible. There are some exceptions. A person going fishing, how you know he's going fishing? Oh, brother, you, oh, you going fishing. You see the rod, you see the reel, you see the uh, uh, equipment to go fishing. When you get ready to go down as a Muslim, I mean, this is what you're going to do. Dress like a Muslim. Dress like you're going to give down. You want the person to know that you are a Muslim. You don't want to think of that you, uh, you know, you're going to the club. You don't want to go down there with some hip hop clothing on, with your hat. That gives you your what's up. What's up? What's up? What's up? You know why they're talking like that? B. Make sure you have the right, I said the right equipment. The right equipment. The rod, the reel, and a strong test line, hooks, and bait. Make sure you have the right equipment. This is very important. You're not going to catch fish unless you do. What is the rod? The rod means that you are a person who is firm. Your belief in your belief and you are flexible. How many ever seen a fishing rod? Now a fishing rod is strong, right? Firm. But it also does this, right? It's flexible. That's the way you gotta be. You're firm on the principles, but you're flexible in your approaches. That's the rod. It means that you're a person who is firm in your belief and flexible in your approach. The real, what is that? The real allows you to control the fish. If you go fishing and you get a bite, all of a sudden you get, oh, I got a bite. You go like this, right? And you let it out, right? The real allows you to control the fish to some degree. You can reel him, him the fish in, or you can give it some slack. You can reel him or her in, fast and slow. The same is true with giving down. You have to know when to pull, you have to know 
when to hold back in your conversation and when to relax in your conversation. Or pull real slow. When you're talking to somebody, give them a dollar. It's like a real, just the way I do it. Well, how you doing? I said, you know I mean, if I'm talking to you, this is easy, I'm talking to a Muslim. I'm telling them, reminding them of, of, I'm reminding them of her, of Allah, what have you. Okay? I'm real gentle. I'm doing it like this. Really no man. Oh, he's a non-Muslim. Like this. Okay? Now, I find that he don't agree with me all of a sudden or something. You know what I do? I wind it up. I give him some slack. You fish, right? The fish, you get a real violent fish, you're going to pop the line. So you have to give it some slack. Let it run with it a little bit. Then when you got it right, you fill it back in. That's what the real concept is about. It's true with giving out. We have to know when to pull in the conversation real fast or pull real slow. But the objective is to get the boat, to get the fish in the boat, fast and slow. And dawah just means to get them to agree with your point of view. You have to have unquestionable, good arguments that they cannot get around if you're going to be effective in dawah. Three, strong test line. See, that's the part of fishing rod you can really see. How many know what the line is? That's the thing that's on the reel, you know, the, 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 the koi, the koi, right? And they call it, it has to be test line. You know, it's test line, right? Why does it say test line? It means it can hold a certain amount of weight. Strong test line. As any good fish, fisherman, if, you t if, your, if your test line is weak, it will not hold the smallest fish. The same in giving dawah. If your test line of your, your line of conversation is weak, the person will be gone with his or her thoughts intact. This line, when you're talking to a person, if you're weak in your conversation and your ability to do verbal gymnastics, because actually you're doing verbal gymnastics, you're going back and forth. Like this. And if you're not strong in knowing how to articulate your thoughts, that person is going to walk away from you. Just like a fish that gets off the test line of a person fishing. You as a diet have to yourself believe what you are saying. If you don't believe it, no one else will. Stay with the strong argument of Tawheed and don't be so rigid. Be like a good fisherman. Sometimes give a line, give them a lot of line, a lot of slack. Sometimes I know I can answer the person's question. But you know what I would do? I would ponder it. I said, you know, that's real deep what you asked me. Hmm. Let me get out of thought for a minute. I got the answer. But I'm doing this purposely. And then I said, let me get back and go ahead and finish talking. Well, he's, he's excited now. He think he got it. Oh, oh, I got it. And then now he's really opening up. Then I said, oh, one minute. Let me answer that question that you said if you finish talking. See? Number four, hook and bait. When you fish, you gotta have hook and bait. They work together. A good fisherman uses different size hooks. Some small hooks, some depending on the size of the fish. You might use a large hook. The same with the diet. Dealing with a person, your hook is the convincing evidence. The convincing evidence is your hook. I'll give you an example of that. Maybe it might be something that's in science. You know in the Quran, it mentions about the two waters. How many ever read that? The two waters, one sweet, one salt, and they hardly never mix together. He cannot argue with that. Because science has agreed with the Quran. Also, the stages of human immorality and other arguments. These are major hooks. So use them 
wise for. When it spe speaks in the Quran about the stages of a human being, how it goes from this stage to that stage, it is exactly what science has discovered. These are hooks that stick up, that's like fishing, and this hook get into the fish, you get that fish. He cannot argue with you. Bait. This is very critical, the right bait. It's very important. In fishing, the fisherman knows this is, if he wants to get uh, that fish atten attention, he must know what that fish likes, and what it dislikes. If you're going to fish uh, uh, in, in fresh water, you have to use a certain bait. You might use a worm. But now if you go out there in the ocean, you can cut half a fish off and put it on the hook and throw it out there. The fish will grab A big fish, though. So you have to have the right bait. The bait has to be attractive. People like to talk about such things as when you're talking to the person, you might compliment them. I see a man coming down the block, he got tattoos all over his face. Up. He got it up. He got his hair loosed up straight up like this. I said, here he comes. I said, here he comes. Mr. Different. Mr. Different is coming down the block. Wow. I said, now stop. I said, wow. I said, how did you do that? How did you get your hair to stand up like that? And he's standing there looking crazy. Moose hair straight up like this, tattoos all over, earrings, piercings all over his body. And then he go to explain them, things to me. I'm baiting him. I said, wow. I said, that's fascinating. I said, listen, uh, we have some coffee in here. Because I'm always by a coffee shop. Would you like to have some coffee? You got a few minutes? You look, yeah, sure, I can do that. I said, what's your name? My name is Richard. Yeah, come on inside, Richard. Tell me about this. And he is telling me about himself. People love to talk about themselves and what they're doing in their life. And he thinks he's unique. Another piece to talk about that's made. The war. What do you think about the war? Well, I think you Muslims are crazy. <laughs> and then I said, you know what? Some of them are. I said, I'm a Muslim. Some of them are crazy. Well, listen, why don't you come on, let's sit down and talk. You got a few minutes? Yeah, I got 15 minutes. And I, let him, I just let him talk. He just talked. He just talked. He just talked. I'm just listening. And when he finished, he said, what do you have to say about it? I said, well, I'm sorry for the people. And somebody asked me about 9-11. This is a big one. You know, they might say Osama bin Laden. What do you, might ask you, what do you think about Osama bin Laden? He built the World Trade Center. I'm from New York. What do you think about it? I said, he said, what do you think about Osama bin Laden? I said, well, I never met him. So I really don't know him. And about who built the World Trade Center, I really don't know who done that. I said, they say Mr. Osama bin Laden did it. And he said, yeah, but they show him on TV that he did it. He said it. I said, well, that's a video. I don't know. I said, if he did do it, he should be brought to justice. As a matter of fact, Muslims should bring him to justice. Justice. That's because our prophet did not teach us to kill innocent men and women and children. And my friend, by the way, Sheikh Khalid, we had friends that were in the World Trade Center that got killed. So now I work on his sympathy. I said, so what we should be concerned about is the lives of those people that was in that building that day and lost their lives. And the families, how they lost their loved ones. Somebody lost their father. Somebody lost a mother, somebody lost an aunt, somebody lost an uncle. I said, this is a big picture. So I get out, I get out of that quick. And then I also say to him, I said, because I've been watching some these, these uh, movies about Fahrenheit 9-11, loose change, and they're showing a whole other picture. But we need to consider what they're saying. You know? These are babies. But be careful when you're fishing. You might attract a fish. It's too big, you can't handle it. You'll be just like the movie Jaws. They have that movie Jaws, that fish tore up everything. So you gotta have the right bait. You put the wrong bait out there, and you're in the wrong water, you're supposed to be in fresh water, you in, all of a sudden you end up in another water. Location, and then I'm gonna demonstrate how to do all of this. Location, 
This is very important, the location. A good fisherman has to know good fishing location. In any type of weather, he might fish in fresh water one day and another day in salt water, etc. The same with the dye. You need to have the knowledge of the best and worst and dangerous areas to give down. Like a fisherman, fresh water is a good place to start. It is less dangerous in most cases, and everyone fish in fresh water, from the novice to the pro. So it, with, so it is with the novice the diet, the new person. This is where you should start, where the people are not so argumentative, less aggressive. Then from there, build your base. In the beginning, stay away from the worst and dangerous neighborhoods. Do they have some dangerous neighborhoods here? Huh? They got no hoods here? Huh? But it's a different setup, right? But they got some bad spots. You got a big hood here. The casino. That's the hood. They doing everything down there. Gambling, prostitution, robbing, stealing, mafia, everything. Stay away from that place. I must have been coming out of there. Brother, brother, I was giving Dava. And he ain't got no money left in his bank account. <laughs> Saltwater fishing. You are now a seasoned diet. This means you got a lot of experience. You are now ready for the ocean, a big league, just like a pro fisherman. He fish in salt water, the ocean. He knows everything in, is in the ocean. He might catch anything, from a big fish to a vicious shark. So he has to be careful because he's in deep water. So it is for the person giving down You have to decide to go into salt water and know that the water is very deep. This is like dealing with people who hate Islam. When you go in that ocean, that ocean water goes 30 or 40 feet deep. You got all types of creatures down there. Sharks is one of the main predators. And, and you have people that are very ignorant. When you give a dollar, it's like being in an ocean. They have studied this long. They're like sharks. They're waiting for you. The worst one that you can talk to in the deep water of this ocean of knowledge is the one that's in philosophy. How many of you are in college? How many of you have had to study philosophy? That is the most diabolical person you can deal with. A philosophy major. He will come with all type of arguments. So, when you're dealing with these major people, you're not qualified to deal with them. It's like you went fishing for a little fish and you caught a shark. Are you caught a well? You cannot handle them. You cannot deal with them. So stay away from those type of people until you develop. Leave those type of people, uh, the atheist, the agnostic, and the philosopher, the lost philosopher, to people like uh, Khalid Yassin, Sheikh Khalid Yassin, Sheikh uh, Yusuf Estes, uh, the great uh, hero uh, Sheikh Ahmed Dida. Uh, uh, and I think it's uh, Sheikh Zia Shaka, is that his name? Yeah, people like that. Don't you try to say, I'm going to do exactly what he did, and go out there and mess with one of those and make you look silly. So, these are some of the things I want to bring to you, and now I want to give you some practical uh, ways how to do Dawa. First of all, alhamdulillah, my experience is talking to people. How many of you have Muslims you want to give down? Somebody in your family, your friend. You can ask questions at this time so I can help you. Are there any questions? I know I sort of jumped. Anybody have any questions? Yes. I can't hear you.
Oh, I got you. I read you. I read you. Did you write? Did you write a note last night about the same thing? Question. Yes, I got that. I was trying. To, I was trying. To, uh, I wanted to answer that. What she's saying. Here's Muslim that wear hijab. Here's a sister that you don't wear hijab. And here's a non-Muslim see it. And here's a non-Muslim question. How come she wear hijab and you don't wear hijab? And she justified that she don't have to wear hijab. Is that correct? Yeah, as long as you fast and do other things. She's telling other than the truth. Some of you as parents are guilty of letting your daughter wear hijab. Walk outside without wearing hijab. I say this again. Some of the parents are guilty of letting their daughter who has reached puberty wear, walk outside without a hijab. Aisha, and I'm asking her question this way. There was a time, in the time after the prophet's death, some of Allah was selling, when Umar was given the talk in the masjid. And women was coming in the masjid for the salat. Umar saw the women coming. He reached down like he saw them coming. He reached down and grabbed rocks. Started hitting them in the head, throwing rocks at them. They was horrified, Umar, doing that. Throwing rocks at the women. So they went to Aisha, brother law and And they said, oh, Aisha, we used to come to the salat when the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and there was no problem. Why are we, why is Umar throwing rocks at us today? She said, yes, you did come during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You did come to Father, you did come to Shah. All this was allowed. She said, but you didn't come dressed the way you're dressed today? She said, you didn't do that in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You didn't dress like that. She said, so, so she said, I agree with Umar, he should have threw rocks at you. What we have to do, young Muslims, sisters, when you know you're not practicing deed, say that I should wear my hijab. Tell a person I should wear my hijab and not wearing it. Because you make it hard on another sister that's covering. Sometimes we hurt Islam so much by our actions, by our speech, by the way we walk, by the way we talk. So my advice is to continue being a good example yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide that person that's sincere. That was my best advice. Continue doing what you're doing. Do not get in an argument with the sister that's not covering. Say, this is what Islam says. If the sister says, well, really, you don't have to do that, you say, go straight to the Quran, the book of Allah, and say, listen, the non-Muslim, she comes out, she said, well, you ask her, what is that you got? She said, I have my fashion magazine and uh, all the latest styles in here. You should pick up your Quran. She said, well, I have my fashion magazine. And in Surah, he said, I'm just sad, wherever it's at, this is how it tells us how to dress. It's been telling us how to dress for the last 1,400 years. Every year, you have to change your magazine. We don't have to change ours. You gotta have some bubble. You gotta be sharp as a racer. Anyone else? Question? Yes? The first thing that attracted me to Islam, true Islam, uh, was the understanding uh, of, uh, how could I put it? That God was one. This was the biggest thing, because I came out of the church. I was in Catholicism, which is the Catholic. You know, and I used to go to this church, I didn't understand nothing they said. Maybe because I was out of weed. They would be like, uh, 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 uh. and then they'd take me and dip me in some uh, uh, cookie and give me a crack in my mouth. And, you know, I wanted another one, you get another one. So I, I wouldn't understand what they were doing. And then when I became sanctified, Holy Ghost, that thing scared me because I didn't know what they were talking about. People falling out, foaming at the mouth. Women dressed literally going up in the air, they lay in there like that. And then when I became Baptist, he gave me a little more structure. But we did a lot of singing, and we used to sit on these long pews. Have any of y'all ever been to a church? Oh, you've been to a church. You know they sit on pews. And I used to sit in a pew, and all of a sudden, 
Uh, I was, you know, young and mischievous. Pretty girl sitting next to me. Oh, I heard everyone sit there. The smell of the perfume and all of that. And I know the reverend when he finished, he was say, let's praise the Lord. And, and turn around and get a person next to your hug. I couldn't wait for that moment. <laughs> so in the churches, there's a lot of corruption that goes on. You will find, and as we know with the Catholic Church, look how many of them have molested children. I mean, here's a man to be with a woman, but he decides to be with a little boy. I would have been left. And here's the church reverend. It's common that they have relationships uh, with some of their, their, their members and their marriage. I have my own blood sister. She used to dip me about my religion. And she was going with the pastor of the church. I said, I said, are you married, Jim? She said, no. My mother said, yeah, uh, your sister, she's been going out with him for the last uh, three or four years. I said, oh, really? I said, mother, did it ever occur to you they are not married? Well, they can get married one day. I said, mother, did it ever occur to you? I said, when they go out at night? Yeah, he picks up. I said, mother, do you know what's going on? I said, do this make sense to you? Don't you supposed to be married? She didn't like that, but she knows it's the truth. Then it turned around. She got back with her ex-boyfriend and married him. And guess who married her? The fornication, the fornicating preacher that she was dating. Stuff for love. That's why the people that need guidance, brothers. We need to guide them. Yes, sir, somebody else. Yes. What is enough? If, if you have a basic understanding of Tawheed and get with an experienced person, if someone asks you quickly, okay, I'm going to say like I'm on the bus, I got two stops to go. And somebody say, yo man, you a Muslim? I say, yeah, I'm a Muslim. What is Islam? And we're going to show you something. What is Islam? Come on, come on, come on. Give me something, brother. What is Islam? You got to be sharp and razor every day. I'm telling you, young brother, what to study. Every day, go and see, go to the 40 Hadith. And when, when the angel Jabril came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to teach him his religion. Every Muslim should know this. So when I'm on the bus, all of a sudden somebody told me, Yo, man, you a Muslim? Yes, I'm a Muslim, brother. He said, man, tell me, what is Islam? Well, Islam is testified there's no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. Islam is to pray five times a day. Islam is to give in charity. Islam is to fast in the month of Ramadan. Islam is to make Hajj to Mecca. That's what Islam is. That's quick. Hit it. See? And then we should know the six articles of belief. We'll hit somebody else. You. What's the six articles of belief? You! No, 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 you, yeah, you! Hello? Me, 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 yeah. Huh? What I'm saying, I'm not putting you, put you on the spot with your kids. Somebody asked you what is six out of belief. You should be able to do it just like this. You should know this. Quick! Six out of belief. You believe in Allah. You believe in His angel. You believe in His books. You believe in His messenger. You believe in the day of judgment. You believe, you believe in uh, divine, divine freedom. You have, to, you have to know this, like this. And then, you can start a conversation from based on that. Someone else? Yes. He's atheist? Yes. I had him. Go ahead. Yes. Let me say something to you. The exact same thing you said, I had a, a very intelligent atheist, and I was on a level of genius talk to me the same thing. And when he said that, he said, if there was any other religion that I would accept, it would be Islam. So we was talking back and forth. So he tried to refute everything I said. But then I said, do you know, I said, you're going to die one day. Wouldn't you, would you want to take a chance that there is 
a heaven or a hell? And then he said, I said, then he, he debated me about dying. Let me tell you what I did to him. Another brother, two brothers standing there with him. And he was a Caucasian brother, this, 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 this human being. And he telling me all this. I said, so when I, when I got to death, he said he didn't believe he was going to die. I said, you don't believe he's going to die? He said, well, that's a possibility that might happen, but I don't know. I said, no, you're going to die. And he kept saying, well, I don't know. I said, no, you're going to die. He said, I don't know. And I said, no, I said, if I have to kill you myself, you're going to die. He looked at me and I was standing up. I said, do you understand now? He said, he said, yeah, that probably would happen. <laughs> But we laughed about it. And I made him laugh. I said, you see the reality? You know? Yes, and the one from over here, sisters. Go ahead. Uh, now, what, what uh, amount of contact do you have to have with a person to be responsible for them to preaching the sin? Okay, I'm going to give you something good for that. How many have ever heard, how many have heard uh, 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 they have this program for the drug act? Uh, NA, AA, CA. How many ever heard of that? Okay. They have a program, right? When that person comes to their program, they have a sponsor. And the sponsor is another recovering addict. By the way, the legal definition of the word addict is any person who continues to use a dangerous drug despite known consequences to itself and others. Addiction is the obsessive and compulsive, compulsive behavior. What they do, they take that person and they put them under their wings. And that person that's sponsor, he helps them. He teaches them the way of NA, a AA, a CA, Narcotic Anonymous, Alcohol Anonymous, a Cocaine Anonymous. And they stay with that person until that person gets clean, 90 days, then they have a big celebration, six months big celebration, so you get a year clean, and he stays with that person until that person he feels he has outgrown his sponsor and he might want to get another sponsor. We as Muslims, we have to do the same. Remember when you give a da'wah, don't expect the person to become a Muslim right then on the spot. Sometimes it takes five to ten years before it happens. Look how long it took me. My friend Shay Carter gave a person uh, da'wah and, and all the Muslims, and they were on a skateboard. And five years later, they're in the masjid. And now they're married with children living in Canada. But it took over five years. So if you're expecting instant result, this is not McDonald's, Mickey D's, and Burger King solutions. This is lifelong solutions for a human problem. And if you love your family being Muslim, think about the Canadian people here. They need Islam. And in, in Toronto, they had Caravana. Caravana. I've been to it uh, one time. I was doing Dawa. Brother, I had to get out of that spot. I was there with, uh, just a few years back, and all of a sudden, brother, all type of fitness is there at the Caravana. I mean, and I, 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 had, I had to go in. I was too much in. So I'm saying, be patient in your Dawa. Yes, sir. See, we, what we have to explain to them. You say, yes, I'm not saying your sister, uh, your wife is immodest or immoral. I'm saying to you that we believe the final revelation came and God has commanded us to dress this way. And then you say also, you say, but I challenge you to something. Like in the United States. I say, go back 100, 125 years ago and look at the film footage of women in the Western Hemisphere, how did they dress? The women wore long dresses, and they wore a hat like a bonnet uh, that the uh, Quakers and the uh, Army people wear. They wore scarves to cover their hair. And when I'm dealing with a Catholic person or a Christian person, and they're telling me, 
white women have to come like this, that you know, uh, and slavery this and that. I said, well, you must be saying that Miriam was a slave in that sense. I said, because go look at the statues of the, that the Catholics even have of Miriam, with a so-called Miriam. They show her with a shawl over her head, covering herself. Righteous women cover themselves. Unrighteous women walk around and expose themselves. Righteous women dress like a banana, covered tight. Unrighteous women dress like a banana with the peeling off. That's why I was saying to you, I'm gonna do a talk, and I hope y'all can let you shaitan the him. He's pimping the whole world. Get us all walking down the block, half naked. And we're paying all our money to him. Yes, sir. Yes, the activity that we have to invest in together. First question is, how long before the U.S. goes around? And how many Muslims are now in the U.S.? I can't hear it. Sorry. The question is, how long before the U.S. goes around? And how many countries are Muslims are now in the U.S.? Okay, myself, as I said, I came to Islam over 35 years ago. And since that time, I've been trying to spread the message uh, one way or the other. The other. My response, the response that I'm getting from the people, the atmosphere in the country is much warmer for Islam. The people are much more receptive. Much more. Uh, we go in Toronto. They have a big area downtown. I'm with the Canadian Ballot Association, and I'm the instructor and trainer. And we have a, like two or three tables long. We got a big umbrella to discover Islam, and the people come to our table. They're very kind, very nice. Once in a while, we'll meet somebody from a Muslim country who now is dressed like Britney Spears. How do they come over my dad? She said, "I'm." A, she said, "Why are you out here?" spreading Islam. She said, Islam is slavery, and I'm free now. And she could barely walk in the tight pants she had on. But she said she was free. So, in the United States, because of 9-11, some of the people are still bitter, and some of the people are open to Islam. Matter of fact, in 9-11, the next day, I was at the masjid teaching a martial art class in the basement, and people was knocking on the door when they take their shahada with 9-11. So, you know, uh, the country that, uh, in Saudi Arabia, I did that out in Saudi Arabia, in Medina. The youth there, they don't, some of them don't value that. Example, if you are in Saudi Arabia, particularly in Medina, the city of the prophet, it's beautiful, very calm. If you dress like this, you won't get respect. They look at you as religious. If, I, if, if you dress like, like uh, the street clothing like this, and if you play a soccer out on the field, and you don't walk around like this, you can sit not religious. And the thing they'll be doing, maybe sitting a bunch of them sitting smoking cigarettes. And I walk over to them, I say, my head what is this? Then the brothers will translate. And then they might have on the shirt that said, G unit. And then on the wall, in Medina, Tupac. And other rappers. I saw a car driving down to Medina, a, a, a fancy car, and it had a weed, a marijuana plant, growing on the back of the car, painted in green. So I called the Muslim police on it. I know him personally. And they gave us a badge. So when I'm in Medina, I can arrest people. You know, that felt good. I was, I was, I, I was like this. I went into a store, they're not supposed to sell cigarettes in Medina, or Mecca. It's haram to sell them. And brother, if you're smoking cigarettes, I know it's a child in town, but you need to stop because it's haram. Why? Because it's destroying your body, it contains poison. Uh, I said it the other night, nicotine is a poison when the liquid extract from the doctor. So stop. Work on it. This Ramadan, stop smoking. But anyway, I go into a store to buy something. And the guy is like this, looking real sneaky. In Medina. You 
know, after the salat. He got a Kevlar cornflakes box up here. And, and I, so I'm from the street. I know, I know something going on. So what are you selling up in this piece, you know? <laughs> so I'm dressed like this. And all of a sudden, somebody come in, each up there, he grab a pack of cigarettes, sell them, take, take the money from them. So I said, who would have been that? He said, he looked at me like this. And then uh, and, and he, we, uh, he said, uh, MC, MC, like tell me, MC, come, like, doing me like this. And he kept waving his hand. Now another part of me started saying, I'm going to grab that arm and break it. <laughs> but I said, no, I'm going to hit him another way. So he kept doing that and I wouldn't leave. So the other brother came to me that speaks Arabic. He's the one of the students at the time. I said, and he spoke English. I said, you're not supposed to be doing this, but you're in the city of the prophet. He said, get out of my store. Get out of your store. Be standing like this. Pop that card out on him. Whatever it was, and I said, BAM! He did it. He said, get out of here, man. You got home. We got real home. He said, oh, good. Leave, leave. Leave with me. Leave with me. What I should have done, I should have took the cigarettes and thrown away. I did. I said, if I catch you doing this again, you're going to have to lock up. Do you understand? Do you understand? He said, yes. Yes, you can understand. Then I educated him a little bit. But a big problem in the Muslim countries is cigarettes. I mean, they got cigarettes in those countries and Muslims are smoking cigarette after cigarette. Yes. I can't hear her at all. Take this mic. Just say that again. Help, help me out. Yeah, one more time. When you're giving that one. Yeah. 
The people, wherever you at, you should make yourself available to give down. Wherever, man, I want to play. I was 35,000 feet up. I was talking to somebody about my father. The last thing I want to be doing on this earth is either giving down on, listen to a lecture, or be married, uh, die in, 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 I don't know, some people got a problem with that. Die struggling in the cause of a law. That's the best way to go. But, uh, yes, sir. Help me, brother, I can't hear What's the one evidence that we need to find that gets the people, gets them to convert to Islam? The thing that gets them to, to come? If you give a talk, Say like we have a lecture tonight, not this right here, a lecture. And the person, like say like Khalid Yassin, very effective, can articulate his thoughts very clear, clear arguments. You can't get around it, you can't go over it, you can't get under it. Once you do that, and in their heart, they have the belief of God in their heart. They believe in God somewhere, it's more than likely. If that person will become a Muslim at that lecture, in time that person will become a Muslim. There's a matter of time, yes. Yeah, I can I believe that you will Yeah, all That's easy. Well, you say, some people, let me just say this, everybody is not going to become Muslim. They're not. If a person tells me, say, look, I don't want to hear about Islam, I don't want to know about it, you know, I don't want to hear nothing about it. So don't, don't be trying to tell me about it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave that person alone. I'm going to leave him alone. Because Allah, whoever Allah guides for Islam, Allah guided him. All you did was deliver the message. If they don't want to hear it, I say, well, listen, take this pamphlet, which you may be reading later. Yes. Do I have to initiate the conversation? No, no. I'm telling you, I, myself, I tried, and I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. We've got to wrap up soon, right? How many moments you got? 15. I do it in 10. Myself, I try to be a good representative of what I'm doing. First of all, I try to make sure my appearance is of such. Clean, neat. Oh, yeah, we've got to show this. And five minutes to show this. Clean and neat in appearance. And some people will look at you and you look, uh, what you call it, uh, pleasant. If you're sitting there like this, on the bus, you can come on like this. I'll say to myself, I got to read that evil book. <laughs> That's another thing. But if you're smiling, like this, another thing, you didn't have to do this in the West. I'm going to elevate. There's non Muslim women, right? Now, I don't talk to women. I don't even like to go to the elevator with women, period. But I do this right here. I go down the I go, Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? And if she got a little kid, What's your name? My name is Mark. My name is Mr. Muhammad. How are you, Mark? I'm fine. All right. Put it right here. I said, No. That's Dawa. The parents said, Wow. There was a Muslim on the elevator, it was so nice, and he had and he had on some nice oil. See? And brother, stay away from that real strong oil. Chris said, that was Muslim. Ooh, I don't know what he had on. It smelled like pine oil. <laughs> yes, sister. Help, help, help. Is it hard to miss you? Is it? Obligatory to initiate dawah. It depends upon the circumstances. The cir circumstances. But sisters should be very careful and be careful dealing with non-Muslim women because non-Muslim women they bring a lot of baggage. They have already, in most cases, and this is not to put them down on new shahada because I was a new shahada and I came from that. They have already had sex relationships. They have children maybe already. Uh, they, you know, so you got to know who you're dealing with. She might have a lot of issue, issues with men. She might invite you over to her house. And all of a sudden, you come over there, four or five of her brothers were growing up in that piece. 
And they said, who is this? Oh, this is my friend Fatima. And you sit there. And he sits right down beside you. You have to be careful, get them a non-Muslim to go into their house. Myself, if a non-Muslim invite me to his house, I know the area. I said, do you stay by yourself? And I stay with my girlfriend and her, and her, and her friend. Matter of fact, the other girl want to meet you. I said, well, let's meet at the coffee shop. Make it neutral. We want to right now show a uh, video, and uh, we're getting ready to wrap it up. I can take one more question after that, but this is about the video about you.
chill it out. Have social activity. Eat firewalls. That's about it. Talk to them. Take them to dinner. Feed them. That's why I come from. Go to Dalai Lama the West Four, you can see what this does. The script is telling about the latest show. Very nice, brother. 25 members of his family came from Switch. His mother, his father died before he died. Let me just make a note of It's extremely important to give Dalai if you're going to live in the West. If you're going to work on your job, sister, you're going to have men that be afraid with you. Some of you are going to get out of the university and go to work. You got to know how to protect yourself. Islamic me. How to stop a man in his tracks from pushing up on you. Brother, you have to be good examples. You have to keep your distance from women. In high school, you don't know how a woman say, oh man, oh you got this nice hand touching your head. You have to stand off. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was like, I don't go to touch me. Because it's not like your mama touching me. It's not like grandma touching me. Grandma touching you, you don't feel no electricity, do you? You just feel a little love. When that girl touches you, brother, it's electricity. Okay, look at it. Yeah, I can get it. Okay, we have one question I'm going to answer it quickly. How do you stop bad, bad habits, backbiting, gossip, practical steps? I will be glad you didn't say something that you just got a man that hates you. When you leave, who leave, who was that, then who was that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Woe to the slanderer and backbiter. Control your tongue. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There's two pieces of flesh that's in the body. If you can control them, I guarantee you paradise. What are those two pieces of flesh? The flesh between the jawbone, the tongue. The flesh between the thigh bone, the private part. Work on controlling your tongue. Listen carefully to what you're going to say. Think five times before you say it. When you get in an argument, say little. Because most of us, when we get too angry, we say things that hurt other people. And we can't take it back. Somebody comes to bring some garbage to you. Your house is clean. This sister brings some garbage. You take her garbage. Before you know, your house is full of garbage. Somebody comes to you telling you some gossip, says, sister, I don't want to do that. That's back right. Let's don't do that. If we can't help the sister, let's go talk about it. Stuff from the Practice it. Try it. Because one day, that sister that you're talking about, you're going to have to wash her body and bury her. And here you were talking about her like real bad. And then you're washing her body. Then you make a genasa over her. We Muslims, we have to start loving each other. All we get is each other. This is all we get. If you have a problem with a sister, make a bitch that sister. Rasulullah said to him, told us what to do. Give each other gifts. It softens the heart. But if you have a situation where a sister is really wild and out there, you're going to have to do some intervention. But if a sister just talking and causing problems, all the sisters go to her and say, stop this. This is not good. All you sisters that are sitting there, if you don't, the sister you're sitting next to you, you know. How many of you know every sister that's sitting there amongst you? Yeah, I bet you don't know each other. Tonight, go to a sister you don't know and say, I'm sorry, I love you from the present moment. Brother, there's some brothers that you don't know here. If you don't know them, shake your hands and brother, I love you from the present moment. I want to get to know you better. No, this is what we got to have now. We sit in groups every day with the same person we know. Break the cycle. Get to know your sister who you don't know. And this is where we can fight these ills. And backbiting is, a, is, a, is, a, is an illness. It's a sickness of the tongue. The mind. The tongue has a mind of its own. And But remember, you might have to bury that person one day. And I've seen that happen with a brother. He talked about a brother, and he had to end up watching that brother's body. So be careful with your tongue. Be careful with your private body. Be careful with your eyes, your eyes look at. Be careful with your ears, listen to. Be careful.
careful that you stick your nose into other people's business. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the best Muslim, the good Muslim, is the one who pays attention. He does not get involved in other people's business. If I can help you in your business, don't come telling me about it. If I can help you, tell me about it. I'll try to help you. But is there something you want to tell me? And it's a gossip? Keep it to yourself. I don't want it. So may Allah bless you and protect you from the law. I hope that you benefited uh, from the da'wah, as far as giving da'wah. Give it to people that have knowledge of how to give it. Go also, uh, Sheikh Khan Yassin, he has a wonderful uh, setup on da'wah techniques. I would advise you to study some of that material that he has. He's very good at what he does. But the, the only thing it is, if you want to swim, you got to get in the water. It ain't going to happen sitting in here. So if I had time, I would take the race right downtown right now. So let's go. Let's go right now. Let's see how, this is how we do this. So tomorrow, one of the brothers said, brother, can you take us out? So I'm ready. Tomorrow, we're going to go out and do some dialogue work. Not just the Muslims. But if there's some sick Muslims, we'll go to them. But go where there's people we don't know, strangers, downtown, people that you think don't want to know about Islam. I'll show you how to stop them on a dime. They're walking this way, they're walking like this, going, get a, you know, tie on, and you can stop like this. Let them turn back around. Easy, very easy. So may Allah bless you, I thank you very much. يا رب العباد وانتشت روحي وصارت دمعي يجي